So we did it by conserving both translational momentum, angular momentum, and kinetic energy. We solved this problem, and here are the answers that we got that the final velocity of the, of the disk is three-fifths this initial velocity. The final uh, center mass velocity of the bar is two-fifths the initial, and then there's omega, how omega uh, varies or depends on the initial velocity and the length. Done. Whew. Okay. But now, there's another thing you could worry about. And that is, we sort of set up this problem, and now we're all satisfied with it. We're all happy now, right? Because we put the origin here, we realize, oh, this does have angular momentum, and this angular momentum of this thing gets converted to the angular momentum of that thing. And you realize, actually, this still has a little bit of angular momentum, too. Everybody's all happy, right? Now that you're happy with that, let me make you sad again. Let's have you make me sad. You could do that by saying, why don't we put the origin here? <sighs> right? If we put the origin here, now what's the initial angular momentum? Now it really is zero, right? Because now this thing isn't moving. It has no angular momentum. This thing is moving, but we know that if we put our origin along the path of an object, its angular momentum is zero because the r vector would be this way. The v vector is that way. They are either at zero or 180 degrees. The sine of that angle is zero. If you go do the determinant method, you'll get that the cross product is zero. So in this case, the initial really is zero. Really is. There's no tricks. I'm not about to do another board that explains how it's not zero. It is zero. So the question is, how could this possibly be rotating if that is zero? I mean, nothing else is different. All we do is move our imagined origin. Physically, it's not different. So this thing will turn. How could there be angular momentum after if there was no angular momentum uh, before? And the answer is, there is no angular momentum after. Okay? Even though that thing is rotating, it has no angular momentum. How could that be? Let's see. So how can LF be zero? Now let's think of it this way. Let's draw, just focus on our bar here for a minute. Here's our bar. And let's put the origin here like we promised. And now I'm going to define an axis this way. I'm going to call it R because we're going to think about all the mass elements in this bar and how they're really moving. Okay? So the bar is not rotating around the origin. It's rotating around its center. Right? So as it rotates, let's think about maybe a little element here, one quarter of the way down, another little element here, three quarters of the way down. And we'd say, okay, as it rotates, this one has a V this way, and this one has a V that way. Okay. So we think about the angular momentum contributions of these two symmetric pieces of the bar, symmetric around the, or, um, the uh, origin. We'll call them 1 and 2. L1, which way is it going to be? R down cross V that way. L1 is going to be out of the board. right? And which way is L2 going to be? R, do, 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 um, R down V into the board. L2 into the board. So maybe they cancel. Maybe. Yeah. If I didn't love you so much, I'd say, oh, they cancel. See you later. But they aren't going to cancel. You can probably already tell they aren't going to cancel. Right? Because what are the values? Here, what is it? It's L over 4 dmv. Right? So it's equal to L over 4, whatever the mass of this element is. We'll call it dm as a hint of what's about to happen. And we got v that way. And L2, what's it going to be? Um, 3L over 4. And then what is this dm? Same dm, little piece, symmetric piece. It's going to be the other way. But those aren't going to cancel. They're, this one has obviously got a bigger uh, angular momentum because it's at a larger radius at the same speed. So that didn't solve it. Wait, but they're not at the same speed, are they? Oh, they're also translating by vcm. And we know the value of vcm. So maybe if we add the value of VCM to the vo the, uh, this velocity and subtract it from that velocity, the two magnitudes will match and they'll cancel. And they don't. It still doesn't work. It's not that simple. So that doesn't make them cancel. You would think symmetrically, if all these things would just cancel, every little element would just cancel, then we would say, actually, even though this thing is rotating, its angular momentum around that point is zero and everything would be fine. But they don't seem to want to cancel. So what's the ultimate way to do it? What do we have to do? We have to add up all the DMs. We've got to do every one of them. So we've got to make an integral. And we've got to integrate to figure out if the angular momentum of this stupid thing translating at VCM, 
a rotating at omega about this axis is actually zero. So let's do it. Let's, let's just go all the way here and see if we can figure it out. So if we're going to do it with an integral, we've got to have a differential. We know that L for all these little pieces, these little individual pieces are kind of like masses in circular motion. L is RMV, right? So if we want the differential contribution from each one, those would be little DLs. And uh, they're at various R's along the axis. That's not the differential. It's the mass that's the differential. We're talking about little pieces of mass of the bar, dm. And they're each going at a different v, depending on where they are. Right, so I'm just going to put v here. So r is obviously a function of r. v is a function of r. And the differential dm we're going to get as a dr. Right? So we could also say that dl is r. And for this, we just need to multiply the mass density which is a total mass, oops, we're using little m, the total mass over the length times dr, right? That's the, how much mass is in a little uh, length dr. That's the dm. And then v is still, it's going to be some function of r. We'll do that in a minute. Okay, so to get the total angular momentum of this crazy thing, let's integrate it along r from 0 to l. Right, this is 0, this is l. All right, and let's pull the m over l out. It's a constant. It's just the density of the bar. It'll make things a little easier. And we've got r here. That's in the formula for l. We've got dr. That's our differential. And now we've got to figure out what is the velocity of each piece as you move down the bar. So think about it physically for a minute. Clearly, this piece, if we're just rotating, this piece is moving forward at omega over L over 2, and this one is moving backwards at omega over L over 2, and this one's not moving. But it's both rotating and translating. So we've got to add those velocities together and think about how they change as you move down the bar. It's hard to think about. That's why I'm suddenly whipping out my notes here. So let's see. So the V as you move down. Let's see. So first of all, they're all moving, translating at the center mass velocity, 2 fifths VI. So for every piece, that's just a constant in the expression, 2 fifths vi, independent of where it is along the bar, all the same. And then you would want to say the next part is how fast they're going is um, omega times r, but the r we care about now is like the radius, it's the distance from the center of rotation. So wherever you are, that is um, L over 2 minus R, okay? So you would add the velocity L over 2 minus R times omega. Let's convince ourselves that's correct, okay? So everything's moving at VCM. That's the 2 fifths VI. Let's say you're at 0. R equals 0. This element is a distance L over 2 from the center, and it's moving positive omega times that L over 2. Right? That's what you put in 0. If you're at L over 2, you get no velocity from the rotation, right? L over 2 minus L over 2 is 0, so you get nothing. If you are way down here at r equals L, L over 2 minus L is negative L over 2 times omega. The rotational velocity gives you a negative term. So you can see this little expression is set up to give you the velocity, this way positive, of every piece of the thing there, of the bar, OK? And it was all supposed to go here. <laughs> so let me write it down here. 2 fifths vi plus L over 2 minus R uh, times omega. See, it does, obviously there's a v there. It doesn't need to go there. There we go. Okay, so now we just have to take the integral and see if this thing uh, makes 0 or not. Let's see. So equals uh, m over L times the integral from 0 to L. I'm going to distribute the R just to make it easier to go with. 2 fifths VI R plus L over 2 omega R uh, minus uh, R squared omega. And there's the differential part, dr. So before we move on and mess this up in some unholy mess here, and we just look at it, oh yeah, we're in good shape. Excellent shape. Now, Got to pull the board out to finish it. Let's see how.
how it goes. Mm, do, do, do. Let's see. So this whole thing equals m over l. And I'm going to go ahead and start integrating here. So 2 fifths vir integral is um, 1 fifth uh, vir squared. So just a polynomial for r. Plus 1 half omega r integrate is 1 fourth omega r squared. Okay. And then minus r squared omega integrate is one, minus 1 third r cubed omega. And that whole thing is evaluated from 0 to L. OK. Let's see. So this is equal to m over L. Now, all these terms have an r in them. So when we plug in the 0, we're going to get nothing. So we really just have to plug in the L. OK, 1 fifth vi l squared, OK, plus 1 fourth l squared omega minus 1 third um, l cubed omega, which can't possibly be right. I made some tiny, teeny, imperceptible mistake. A, a 1 fourth l um, cubed, oh, yeah, uh, let's see, this one was uh, uh, <laughs> well, let's see, where did I mess it up? So I integrated here. Wait, when did I integrate? I integrated from here. OK, 1 half omega r squared, omega r squared L. So how did I lose an L here? 2 fifths vi plus L over 2 omega r. That, I thought, was an L. Oh, that's an L. There it is. I thought that was a half. It was L over 2. Sorry. We're not starting over because I'm tired. OK. So this is an L. Ah, there we go. So that would make that term uh, L cubed omega. So now they all match. L cubed omega, L cubed omega. Cool. OK. Equals M over L 1 fifth VI L squared plus, let's see if we have 1 fourth L cubed omega minus 1 third L cubed omega, which is equal to what's left is uh, negative 1 twelfth L cubed omega. Did it make zero? Ah. Oh, wait a minute. We have omega in terms of vi, don't we? From the beginning. Yes, we do. It equals m over L 1 fifth vi L squared minus 1 twelfth um, L cubed. And what was omega? It was 12 vi over 5 L. 12 vi over 5L. Here we go, 12, 12, L, L squared. So we get 1 fifth VI L squared minus what's left, 1 fifth VI L squared, oh, M over L, equals 0. 